What's going on guys? Today we're talking rear foot elevated split squat. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through a how-to, how I like to conceptualize them and how I've changed them over my training career. And I'm also gonna talk about mistakes and tips to keep in mind when programming rear foot elevated split squats. So right off the bat, I do wanna discuss three things. And I promise if you just hopped in here to see the how-to, bear with me because I promise these three things will change how you view your rear foot elevated split squats forever. The first aspect I want you to consider is how you're positioning your back leg. Oftentimes we default to putting that back foot onto a bench, but that doesn't really account for a lot of the differences between us as lifters. If you're a shorter lifter, that can often be very uncomfortable because once again, you don't have really long legs. So what I've been doing is I have a sandbag with the plate angled and what ends up happening is I can still bias emphasis into my front leg, but it feels a bit more natural when moving through that range of motion. The second thing I want you to think about is how you are biasing your hips. So a lot of times we'll see folks put their back leg up and they'll externally rotate that open hip. Think about shutting it down and internally rotating slightly. So close that hip and that's gonna allow you to put a lot more emphasis in that lead leg once again. The third thing I want you to think about is when you are moving through this range of motion, pay attention to where you're placing that weight in the hips. So are we sitting into a hip and biasing fully and leaning over, or are we able to maintain a more neutral pelvis angle when it comes to how we're loading? Because that can heavily dictate how much work we're giving this front leg. So the three things I want you to think about when programming and performing rear foot elevated split squats is to number one, pay attention to your rear footed position. So if you don't like the bench, that's totally okay. Find a surface that works for you. I'll usually opt for this variation, or I'll use one of those pads that the rear foot elevated split squat work really well for because it works on that ankle position. So it feels very natural to go around it. The second thing I want you to think about is internally rotating that open hip and biasing it so you're not kicking into external rotation and taking away work from this lead leg. The third thing I want you to think about is where your hips and pelvis are through space and time. Are you kind of defaulting and leaning into this hip because you're compensating for a lack of stability? Or are you able to maintain a slightly more inline posture with the pelvis and hips? These three things can be huge for growth. But without further ado, let's dive into the how-to. So step one is to decide how you're gonna load this exercise. I'm gonna use a bilateral load. So pick up my bilateral load. Usually it's about two to three feet lengths out from our surface. I like to go about two and a half. It allows me to get a nice good range with my quad. So we're gonna focus on slowly eccentrically loading, allowing that knee to track. And again, we are keeping weight into this front leg and internally rotating this back hip. If it helps to think about, you could even put your back foot up and slightly angle the heel out and that'll help you ensure you're not externally rotating that hip at all. So close it down, close it down. And something else to think about is when we are traveling up in the concentric lifting portion of this exercise, push down with the front leg versus back. So we want those hips to travel up and down versus pushing off and back. So this is what we want to avoid. We want to stay over our front leg and travel up. And another thing to think about too, that can be really helpful, is to pay attention to your torso angle. So when we are tracking down, we don't wanna be so upright to where we're not able to actually load the front leg to its fullest. A slightly forward torso angle is totally okay because it's gonna allow us to keep more weight biased on that front leg. Overall, that's the gist of this movement. If you pay attention to what you're doing with this outer hip, how you're loading this front leg, and how you are biasing the hips when it comes to how they're tracking, you'll be pretty well off on this exercise. So three mistakes to avoid when doing rear foot elevated split squats is number one, and we talked on this in the how-to, is to think about pushing up and not back. We do not wanna see the hips traveling back as we go. Keep your weight on that front leg and keep the tension high. The second mistake to avoid is taking a super wide stride. So if your stride is so wide that you're not able to get a nice deep knee flexion on that front leg, bring the back foot in and allow deeper knee flexion. This is gonna give you greater quad growth. Third mistake to avoid is 
kind of taking a rigid thinking when applying this exercise to your program. And this focuses on thinking it could only be performed one way. And this kind of circles back to how we talked about changing your foot position if the bench doesn't feel that natural for you or finding a surface that works. Remember, in the rear foot elevated split squat, our goal is to bias our attention on that front leg and focus on unilateral stability and strength. So don't box yourself into thinking that it can only be performed one way when it comes to nailing your positioning. All right, so three tips for the rear foot elevated split squat is number one, do not be afraid to change your positioning and loading. So we have bilateral loading, we can do a contralateral loading, ipsilateral, we can add a level of support to focus on keeping us more in line with how we're loading. Don't be afraid to experiment with different means of loading and don't just default to bilateral loading because that's all you know. The second tip I have for this movement is to play around with tempos and pauses. This movement I think is one of the best for quad growth and if you add tempo and add elements to keep tension super high, it can be a phenomenal exercise to keep in your toolbox to focus on targeting the quads and unilateral strength and stability. The third tip I have for you is to video yourself often with this movement. And no, I'm not saying be over analytical, but this isn't an exercise that I think you should just rip once, understand, and then never check in with again. So maybe once every mesocycle, or maybe two times every mesocycle, focus on how you're performing these and if you can level up your form anymore. All right guys, that wraps up this video on the rear foot elevated split squat. It is bar none one of my favorite unilateral leg exercises. So hopefully you were able to take something away from this video to apply to your programming. As always guys, if you have questions, drop them down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.